Hey folks, I'm Chris and I'm your Commander Mechanic. Before we dive into today's video, I wanted to remind everybody about our big 5,000 subscriber giveaway going on right now. You can win a full 100 card Marin of Clan Nell Toth deck. Be sure to check out the video linked up top for more. Now in today's tune-up, I actually want to take a look at a deck submitted by me. One of my favorite decks I've ever built is Grismold the Dread Sower. It was built some years ago and rarely updated since as I've taken it apart and put it together, but it hasn't seen the light of day in the last year at least. With goodies from Strixhaven and upcoming sets like Midnight Hunt, I wanted to show all of you how I tune up my own brews and what that process looks like. First, our commander. Grismold is a 3-3 Golgari Troll Shaman for 3 mana. He innately has Trample, which is awesome, and at the beginning of your end step gives each player a 1-1 green plant token. Whenever a creature token dies, Grismold gets a plus 1 plus 1 counter on him. This natural, inbuilt synergy makes Grismold a very high value ceiling commander, and one that wants to get big fast. This is a deck that excels at taking opponents out in a single swing via commander damage, as deck synergies can give Grismold 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters each turn with very little effort. As such, a lot of the inclusions in the deck are high synergy pieces. They may have a bit of a lower value floor, in that they don't always do a lot on their own, but when combined with other cards in the deck, the value you can get from them is sky high. For instance, there are three key synergies in the deck, tokens, aristocrats, and counters. Grismold is a perfect confluence of all three of these strategies, and with or without our commander, we can do all of these very well. In the existing list, we have token synergies like the classic doubling season. This overlaps with our strategy because we'll be making tokens and putting counters on Grismold. Fantastic. But almost better in this instance is Primal Vigor. Often seen as a worse version of Doubling Season because it's symmetrical, Primal Vigor in this instance makes our opponents extra tokens and counters, but we want that. Because the more tokens we can kill, the bigger Grismold can get. From an aristocrat standpoint, we want classics like Zulaport Cutthroat that trigger when a creature we control die. But even better are creatures that trigger whenever any creature dies, like Poison Tip Archer. Since we're creating tokens for our opponents, this is going to be a big value engine very, very quickly. Our main objective with the deck is going to be to create creature tokens for ourselves and our opponents, then kill those tokens. With or without Grismold, that's how we're going to win. Included in the list are cards like Genesis Chamber, Clackbridge Troll, and Hunted Troll, which all make creature tokens for our opponents. These small creatures are barely obstacles for Grismold, and since he innately has Trample, they won't even be able to chump block him well. And naturally, we have ways to make ourselves tokens, ranging from Bitter Blossom to Tender Shoot Dryad to Michaeloth. These are either gradual payoffs triggering on our upkeep or each upkeep, or big bursts of creature tokens. Everything we want to make a built-to-die army. But then how are we killing off these tokens? The best way to do that is with token shrinking enchantments. Illness in the ranks and virulent plagues are your all-stars in this deck. These auto-kill the majority of tokens that will be created and either trigger your aristocrats effects or grow Grismold. Typically, these are your first tutor targets. And selections for board wipes and removal hinge around value ceilings rather than value floors. For instance, Damnation would be an excellent board wipe in many decks, but we don't want to risk destroying Grismold. As a commander-centric deck, we'd rather spare him and take out everything else. So I've included board wipes that shrink creatures rather than destroy them. Mutilate, even in a two-color deck, takes out the majority of small creatures like tokens and can buff Grismold significantly. Massacre and Languish can function the same way, creating big bursts of creatures heading to the graveyard while ensuring Grismold sticks around and is able to swing through near-empty board states. Pernicious Deed is a great example of a board wipe that gets better in this deck. You can sacrifice it for zero to destroy only tokens that have been amassed, resulting in a massive increase in power for Grismold or a bomb of triggers for your aristocrats, while being flexible enough to take out larger threats later in the game. 
But with all of this being said, what would or could be improved? Talking about the list, it seems really tight and there are not a significant amount of cuts to be made. But that's where I'd make some personal changes to the deck. In my original list, I've got a few cards that now, almost two years after building the deck, I'd consider unfun or that create poor game states. Grave Pact and Dictate of Erebos are enchantments that very quickly create disproportionate value. On paper, that's good for you as the player, but in practice that snowballs games to the point where other players just can't compete. Creating a soft lock on the board against the deck that wants to be attacking or that wants to grow a board state is absolutely crippling. There are a few creatures I'd be seeking to replace for other effects. Plague Mare is cute, but as a one-time effect, there are other better options. Doomwake Giant gets value over time and can shrink down creatures repeatedly, but even with the saturation of enchantments in the deck, it's not something that's going to be reliable. Some of the ramp I originally included, Kodama's Reach and Cultivate, aren't where they need to be in the curve, considering how much you want to be hitting a turn 3 Grismold. I'd likely drop them and open up room for pieces lower in the curve. And Knight of Souls Betrayal is a universal shrink for all creatures, which one would think is well worth it in a deck where you're making so many 1-1s for everyone, and where Illness in the Ranks and Virulent Plague are so important. But there are so many crucial creatures in the list with one toughness that shrinking non-token creatures can be devastating to you more than anyone else. I'd definitely like to replace it. I'd like to see additions to the list like Species Specialist, Nadir's Nightblade, and Woe Strider. All great utility that draw cards, drain enemies, or provide valuable sack outlets while boosting creature counts. Chatterfang would make a great addition, essentially acting as a pseudo doubling season for your creature tokens if you make them one at a time. Belladros Witherbloom would make a great add to the high end of the curve, making lots of creature tokens and giving you a chance to sink some life into creating more mana too. Wand of Orcus deserves consideration as well. The ability to put it on a big Grismold and make a ton of zombie creatures is a very high value ceiling that can run away with the game. Sat's Will is a favorite of mine that has the ability to make a boatload of small thralls at instant speed while providing the utility of an edict and graveyard removal. And perhaps the card I'm most excited to add to the list is Culling Ritual, wiping out all tokens and most mana rocks while providing a massive boost in mana can be an incredible way to get so far ahead your opponents may not be able to catch up at all. It's a contextual, synergistic board wipe with mana ramp tacked onto it, everything you could possibly want. You can find my updated list in the description below, where I've put a newer spin on this older deck. Now that I've got two years experience between building the list and now, I definitely think I've applied some more of my deck building learnings to it and improved it significantly, from a play experience standpoint and from an overall benefit standpoint. If you want to pick up any of the cards I talked about today, make sure to check out my affiliates, also linked in the description. And tell me what you think about this deck and this self-tune-up in the comments. If you want to see more, be sure to let me know. As always, folks, thanks for tuning in, good luck, and have fun. As always, a huge thanks to our patrons. We could not do this without you. A special shout out to our Lodestone Golems, Ben Frain, Sterling Lankford, Will Briggs, Ben Davis, David Nori, Corey Whitaker, Snipes, Cameron Scott, and John McManus, and our Metalwork Colossi. Charles Owen, Matthew Chandler, Pulsating Kiwi, Wyatt M, Timothy Conan, Matt Oakes, Stephen Dunn, Jeremiah Lewis, Wellsford Ranger, and Joshua Jackson. Thank you, everyone. You are all awesome.